What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? It's Ring Bing. Welcome to the game room. I've gotten requests to do a video like this many times in the past. Never really knew the right time, and now that I'm seeing other YouTubers do it, I guess it's going to be more trending, so it's probably a good time to do it now. Um, and what we're going to do is go over some of the series in my collection, whether it's Xbox or PlayStation or Sega, whatever it may be. I'm just going to point out some of the obscure items, the rare items, high-end things that you probably didn't know I had or may not even known existed. I don't want to make this like a huge game room tour that's probably going to come in the next few weeks, but we will go over some things. Some things I will leave out. We don't need to go through my 360 games or PS3 games, but there's going to be some interesting things to see. So guys, sit back and relax. Let's check it out. Alright guys, so I don't really know where to start with a video like this, because really all I'm doing is just, I guess it's pointing out just the more rare, obscure things in each and one of my collections, you know, whether it's the Sega CD, Saturn, and we'll start with the Saturn here, and I'm just going to kind of just point it out, and I, if I have any backstory to it, I'll tell you, but I don't want this video to be extremely long. People's just always wondering, like, man, what's the rarest stuff do you got for this system or that system? And I don't want this video di to disappoint a lot of people, but at the same time, I don't have, you know, Haganes or Arrow Fighters, things like that. I do have some high-end stuff, but I, you know, don't get your, don't get your hopes up for some crazy stuff you'll you'll never see in your life. I'm sure you'll see a lot of these things. So, anyways, with my Sega Saturn collection, the the thing that I'm most proud of is that Nights in a Dreams complete with the 3D controller. I uh, still got that $69 price tag on there. Honestly, I can't remember what that's going for now. Complete, maybe like a maybe like a hundred or so. I have no idea. Uh, next to that for my Saturn collection would probably be uh, Panzor Dragoon 1 and 2. I don't have Saga. I would love to play that game. And that's another thing too is to get a collection like this. I mean, I got to sell off some things to be able to keep games. And I've gotten many. You'll, you'll hear it like a broken record throughout this video where I'll say I had this and then I ended up getting rid of it. It just helps fund the collection that way. You know, I'd rather have four solid titles versus one just high end, not that great game. So anyways, uh, Panzor Dragoon 1 and 2, nothing else too crazy, although I will say Alien Trilogy is probably my favorite Saturn game. That game is absolutely awesome. Um, and God, I really need that app that just, I, you know, I, I tried the apps many a times, but my collection's almost, probably almost 6,000 games now. I It would be so hard <laughs> to put all that stuff in there, so I forget very easily. Moving down here into Sega CD, my Sega CD collection is not that impressive, which I'm sure a lot of people's isn't. Um, probably the best titles that I have here would probably be Sonic CD. Uh, I think that might be it, actually. My Sega CD collection is very, very minuscule, but this is a collection that's taken me a long time to acquire. Some of these things actually you can see from Goodwill whenever I picked them up. I love leaving stickers on there. It just reminds me of where they came from. You know, to get an awesome game for so cheap is wonderful. So nothing much with the Sega CD, although I do got... I think I had the original, yeah, I got the original Chuck Rock and Chuck Rock 2. Moving down here into the Dreamcast Turbo Graphics area. Excuse me. Turbo Graphics is a collection that I am very uh, much trying to collect for, but it's very hard because the games are stupidly expensive. And the best one that I probably have, which you can see, is Splatterhouse. It doesn't have the cardboard, so technically it's not complete, but people will try to get, I don't know, maybe like 80, 90 bucks all day for just the, the, the casing, the manual, and the hue card. Uh, other games, I mean, I got good games. That's the one thing about it. I want to try to get good games for the for the Turbo Graphics. You know, if I'm if I'm spending money, because I, I it'll, it's probably going to be uh, far and few between that I find any of them around here. I would love to come across a Turbo lot. Uh, for the Dreamcast, what do I have crazy? I do got uh, Caution Seaman, complete in box with a microphone, which is very awesome. If you've never played that, I highly recommend it. And of course, I got a lot of classics, you know, like Shinmu. Uh, Sega stuff on my side of the globe, is it's just hard to come by. So anytime that I can get it, I try to hold on to it as best I can. Sonic Adventure, that's another one that always holds its value. It's a fun game to play. Oh, let's see, moving on up. Let's see what what's what's obscure in this. Guy? There's there's a, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, oh we 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 missed down here, and I'm sorry that the camera's moving all over the place. I didn't really plan for this video. I just kind of want to show off some things. 
Um, let's see, Hotel Mario for the Philips CDI. Philips CDI is a terrible system in my opinion, but that's you know one of the staples to have right here. Uh, Hotel Mario, not a fun game at all, very terrible. Um, also for the Philips CDI, you know, as a lot of people know, I got a Zelda Shrine. That is the Faces of Evil complete for the CDI, and that one's pretty damn uncommon. Uh, I, I there's only a few Zelda games that I'm missing. Like I, there was Link Between Worlds. Whenever it came out, any game that comes out new, I buy it and immediately sell it and just get it again when I can get it dirt cheap at a yard sale. So there's like a few Zelda games that I'm missing. Obviously Zelda's Adventure and then Wands of Gamelon, but it's mostly complete. Uh, for systems, I got the Hyperscan complete in box with a few. Actually, all three of those games are the same. Picked them up for like a dollar and they're not worth anything. Uh, but the Hyperscan, that's a terrible system, boy. I'll tell you what, not a good one. A uh, subscriber donated this one. This is the Action Max uh, VHS system. I got to do a video on that thing. That thing does not look <laughs> awesome, but it looks interesting enough to make a video. As far as systems go for obscurity, uh, this Game Gear right here, you know, people have asked what that is, and I actually did the VGA mod out um, to have that modded to go to your TV. A mod I was very proud of, very hard one to do, and this was before the Retron 5 came out with the adapter to play on your Retron 5 to play Game Gear games and Master System games, so that was awesome, but now <laughs> I don't think it's worth much at all. Uh, we got the Philips CDI down there, we got the Turbo Graphics with the booster on the back, which is pretty damn uncommon. And uh, we got the 3DO, obviously. You got to have that for all the time. You'll probably never play it. Uh, moving over, I don't know. Where, like I said, it's just going to be jumping a lot. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of box consoles, but probably the best one that I, well, there's two that I'm very proud of. And that is the Turbo Graphics Express Complete. I think I am missing the insert, but I do have, you know, the, the, um, the molding in there. And of course, the deluxe set with Rob the Robot, which is my very first Rob. He is awesome. Missing one claw. This is the only thing he was missing out there. I've just yet to order that. Uh, but, you know, I just have variants. A lot of people have variants for boxes. Um, there's only a few boxes that I'm missing, and it's obviously going to be for consoles. I probably won't be able to find, which is the Turbo Graphics and, you know, Philips CDI and things like that. Just really high end boxes. Uh, we'll, we'll look at some of this PlayStation stuff right here. And, you know, with my with my game room, a lot of people know, I display things that kind of have some really awesome titles, you know, displayed or ones that I'm just a, a huge fan of. And that's why it's, 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 it'll be easier with this video, just kind of show you some of the things. Uh, but one title that jumps up at me is Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster. I picked that up at Goodwill for $1.50. That one's actually fairly uncommon. Now, listen to that, listen to that floor squeaking, dear Lord. Uh, but Jackie Chan, some master picked it up for a dollar fifty. I don't know what that one's going for. Maybe like forty, fifty. But it's just uncommon. You don't see it that often. Uh, you gotta have Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Black Love. That game, I swear, it, it it never goes down in price. That thing always goes up. Very fun game. That was truly a masterpiece. I that that got me to be a huge fan of PlayStation after playing and beating that. Uh, you know, you gotta have the Final Fantasy series. Uh, the Medieval series are fairly uncommon. Complete. You might find them loose. Um, with the Mega Man games, Mega Man Legends 2 complete, that one's not the easiest to find. I think it goes somewhere between 60 bucks, maybe more. Um, this is a pretty uncommon game. If you're a fan of Resident Evil, this was actually a first-person Resident Evil game. Pretty damn interesting. It, it doesn't play that well, but I, I, I did actually, like, grind my way through it. As far as probably, like, the most obscure, expensive, just rare game that I have for the PlayStation 1... Would probably be Thousand Arms. I got that recently through a big deal through a subscriber, which was very awesome. He gave me an awesome deal on a lot of things, and that was one of them. Same with like Puzzle Fighter and Pocket Fighter. There were some cool things in that lot, and there's a lot of things back here. Like I said, I don't want to do a huge room tour and just go over every individual game, but you know, there's there's some there's some cool stuff in this collection. I'm just kind of going over some things that you may not know about or never seen, uh, which <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to work out. Uh, with the Wii collection, now I did put my complete unbox Kirby. I, that's my favorite NES game of all time right there. It's got to be besides like golf or something. People think I'm crazy. This is pretty damn obscure. Apparently that I learned. This was also another subscriber donated item, which was Chuck E. Cheese's Super Collection. He he didn't know, he didn't realize the price was what it was when he, or what he did when he sent it. And his letter, he's like, you won't believe what this thing's going for. And I didn't. Says it's abs I have yet to try that one. I do feel bad. I do got it. I do got to gut my way through that one. But that one's pretty, pretty uncommon. 
uh, Castles, oh god, I'm gonna butcher that name back here behind Mario. Uh, Castles uh, Shikigami 3, uh, Bullet Hell Shooter for the Wii. Pretty uncommon. Look at that uh, $4.99 price tag on there when GameStop didn't real realize what they were doing. Uh, for the Wii, though, like I have a lot of a lot of shovelware. People know that I have a bad addiction to collecting terrible Wii games. Um, let me see. Uh, Mur oh, Lord, I'm going to butcher a lot of names today. Muramasa, Mura, yeah, you know, you, you can see it. Let me see. It looked like an idiot trying to, trying to pronounce the names. Uh, that one's not too crazy. Um, there, there's a lot of games in here that you're actually not going to see on my Wii collection because they're actually in the living room when I got the fellows over. We'll be playing, you know, just, you know, common stuff. Mario Kart, Smash Brothers. Uh, what else is crazy in here? This is actually, I'm not a sealed collector. There's very few sealed things in there. It's got to mean a lot to me. This one's sealed. It's not worth really anything. Maybe 10 bucks, but that's my favorite version of Resident Evil. And that means a lot to me. Um, what else do we got? I, probably, I hate saying um a lot, but I'm sure I'm going to say it. The last, oh, look, let's, <laughs> these are pretty uncommon too. I can't remember what are these, like Taiwan or Hong Kong released variants of Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. Look at the covers of those. It's the stupidest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, behind that, you got the last story with the uh, collector's edition book back there. That's fairly uncommon. Uh, anything, I should have planned more ahead. Keep a lookout for Yogi Bear. That thing still holds its value pretty well. If I'm not mistaken, it did back when I picked it up. Kind of shocked me to see the price of what it was. Uh, the GameCube collection. Now, GameCube, uh, much like PlayStation 2, I only collect, you know, first-party games for the system. And if I have a third-party game in here, it's just because I don't have it on another system. So you'll see there's a lot of beautiful titles in here. You know, Custom Robo, obviously Eternal Darkness, my favorite GameCube game. The most obscure item in here that I have is probably Dead Set Center right here, which is the GameStop exclusive Resident Evil 4 in the tin case right here and it just has a copy of the game uh with the you know it's got like uh what is that GameStop little receipt but it's got this this picture of Leon in there very interesting to have I'm a huge fan of Resident Evil 4 and that's probably my most obscure game for the system I do got a bunch of you know there's it's all good solid titles but yeah like I said it, there's no there's no wildness in the GameCube collection that I have Zoids down there. That's a that's a good. I remember picking that one up for like a dollar at a yard sale. That was cool. Uh, there's some soundtracks down there, which ah, we don't need to get into that. This ain't a room tour. Like I said, we're just going over some some craziness. Uh, let's see. I'll save that one for last. Let's go over to Sega. Sega Genesis. I have actually condensed this collection, as a lot of people know, and took out a lot of sports and filler titles, just unwanted unwanted titles, and just put them in the closet. And kind of made this collection look a little bit better. And as you can see, more there, there's some good stuff up there in the rows. But down here, we got like Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, Gunstar Heroes, uh, Contra Hardcores, Castlevania Bloodline, all complete. And those are obviously, you know, well, you should know. Those are some, some pretty high-end titles to have complete. Uh, we got Rise Star back there complete, which is pretty uncommon as well. That's it loose. I, I think that this is like 30, but complete. I think it can it can breach a hundred all day. Um, obviously, like my biggest item in the game room to me is Harvest Moon Complete in Box. My most expensive rare item is that one. I've had things higher, and like I said, I'll tell you this before I, I've gotten rid of rid of things. But that game I will never get rid of, simply for the fact that that game right there is what got my wife into gaming, and it it just means a lot to me. We had a lot of fun playing it together. Uh, Toki going ape spit right there is pretty damn uncommon. Same with Wings of War, another shooter for the uh, side-scrolling shooter for the Genesis. Very cool. 3DX collection. I don't have a lot of games, as a lot of people don't. Tempo is probably like the most fun, uh, but probably like the most obscure one will probably be Brutal, you know, Attack of the Claw, or Above the Claw complete. Um, I'm just now really getting into Master System collecting, so I don't have a lot of the huge heavy hitters, but I do have one which I am very proud of and I have been playing recently, which is Fantasy Star right there, complete unbox. I uh, got that with that deal through that subscriber. I was able to add a lot of very nice titles to the collection. Same with the Sega 3D glasses, which actually work wonderful. I do keep a few loose disc games over here. There's some pretty nice ones in here. There's Shadow Run, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, what is that? The, uh, the Hyperstone High Step, that's what it is. Uh, so there, there's some there's some good Sega stuff here. That's there's no doubt about that. Uh, let's see, 
As far as consoles, you know, I got the Atari Lynx, which is not as common. Same with the Nomad, the um, Neo Geo Pocket, and of course the Turbo Graphics Express, along with just some, you know, just random consoles that I have, PSP. This is actually pretty uncommon. This PlayStation 2 controller right here, which is pretty, man, this tripod's making it real easy to do this, I'm not having to lean over here. That controller's freaking wild. I got that at the yard, at a yard sale, I don't know, maybe like a dollar or two. Uh, this one is wild. Look at this SpongeBob PlayStation 2 controller. Can't remember exactly where I got that, but that one's pretty freaky. Um, as far as PlayStation 2 games, again, this is a collection that I only really try to go for just first party titles. Um, I do guess I, I, I've gotten rid of a few. I got rid of a ro robot alchemist actually here recently. Um, we got a uh, shoe loop, which are, yeah, I mean, that, that one's fairly, fa fairly high end for its value. Uh, Budokai Tenkachi 3 over there. That one's definitely up there. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? Like I said, I should have planned for this a little bit more. Drakengard. You know, yeah, everybody knows that Drakengard's up there. Fatal Frame 3 back there. Very awesome. I'm a huge Fatal uh, Fatal Frame game or fan. Uh, moving down. Just a lot of first party titles. Um, I really wish I had the original Obscure. Oh my goodness, that's one that I needed. Uh, moving down, we got, uh, oh, Mr. Mosquito, that one, you, it's uncommon, um, it's not a, a high-end game, maybe like a $20 game, you just don't see it that often, it's a very interesting, wild game to play, uh, moving down here, we do got some, still, like I said, there's a lot of good titles in here, Silent Hill series for the PlayStation 2, I think there may be one that I'm missing, I need the full set, uh, let's see, moving down, is there any other things that's just crazy, um, Xena Saga 3, obviously got to have that, same with the Yakuza 2, those games, especially Yakuza 3, if you can find that for PlayStation 3, the games were stupidly expensive, not crazy, but it's more than what you would think a PlayStation 3 game will go for, uh, moving over here to one of my favorite systems, obviously, which is the original Xbox, and I definitely got most of the high-end stuff, just out and about, I have condensed it a little bit, but not much, Call of Cthulhu is, you know, it's always going to be a, a good game to pick up. Very fun to play. Fatal Frames are going to always be crazy in price. Futurama for the original Xbox. Not only is it a fun game, but it's kind of like watching an episode you'll never get to see unless you get that game. I do know they make it for PlayStation 2. I think original Xbox is a little bit more in common to get. And obviously the biggest heavy hitter that I got for original Xbox is Operation Genesis Complete. Uh, look at this wild gamester controller with like the, the gun triggers. Very awesome. Picked that up at Goodwill for maybe four or five dollars. That was very awesome to pick up. Oh my goodness. And now we just, I just, I just knocked over Rob. So now I got to pick him up. So we'll pause the video one second. All right. Rob's okay. Luckily he landed on my bean bag and I just bumped the box over here. Kind of the downside of having things all over the place in the game room. Uh, moving down here into the original Xbox collection. What do we got back here? Anything super crazy? Stubbs the Zombie. Very awesome. Uh, it's, I, I swear it's underrated. Not a lot of people talk enough about that game. Test Drive, Eva Destruction, another good one. Uh, and of course the Guy game. That's a pretty obscure game right there. Definitely some contro controversial, uh, stuff in there if you know what I'm talking about. Moving over here, like I said, we're not going to go over anything in the 360 or PS3 department. There's really no need. I will say that's pretty pretty uncommon is this Grand Racing wheel. Obviously modeled after San Andreas for the PlayStation 2. Freaking weird looking. Uh, Alright, for some of my loose Atari games here. Pitfall 2, you don't see that one that often. Pick that one up for a buck. I think it's like a 20 buck game. This, probably my one of my most obscure or high end uh, Atari games, which is Hero Complete Unbox. Very fun game. There's not that many Atari games that I can just actually sit down and play and just have the most fun. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, younger people out there who didn't grow up with Atari, they know what I'm talking about. Not saying it's a bad system. It's just, it's hard to hold my attention. This one, you don't see too often. Gremlins for the Atari. Very cool. Uh, let's see. While on the theme of Atari, I guess, before we get into the N64 stuff, I do, I moved all my uh, boxed Atari games down here and... Nothing too wild in there. I do have Mario complete in box as well as, you know, just some weird ones like MASH and whatnot. Uh, the, the, the most rare one that I have now, and I've gotten rid of a few of the porn series, but Custer's Revenge complete. This thing is very minty. 
But this just holds a staple in a game room right here. It's like having E.T., I guess. Everybody wants one. It's just very comical. I mean, I mean, look. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do nothing about that. Uh, that let's see. We don't need to go. My my uh, 3DO collection, not too impressive. I uh, don't know what would be the, the most high end. I did, I maybe, hmm, I don't know. One of you guys can look at that and see what I got and just say, yeah, well, that one's probably the probably the cream of the crop. I don't get too much 3DO action, trust me. It's not the not the best system, in my opinion. Uh, it does have some good games. They're like Gex plays really well on it. For the 64, now I, I, I will sound like a lot of gamers out there when they, when it comes to collecting. My best one, my most expensive, if you want to call it that, it's probably Conker's. I don't have like super bowling or, you know, sculptors cut, none of that. I don't have nothing too crazy, but I do have just a plethora of solid titles. Harvest Moon, it's definitely a good one. Resident Evil 2, oh God, I can't believe they fit all that on that one disc. What makes it shine is probably like the complete in box stuff that I have. Nothing too insane, but there is some really nice stuff down here. Uh, let's see. I don't want to move too fast, but at the same time, I want this video to be two hours long. Let's see. Let's move over here. Now, the handheld stuff is going to be a little bit more tricky. I'll really just show you some of the stuff on this wall, just because if you look down here in these buckets and bags, and right there, those big stacks, I probably have four or five hundred games just over there. But these are some of my highlighted games. I, I'm very close to a full set on a Game Gear set. There are some very nice ones that I'm missing, like Shining Force and whatnot. Tempo Junior, you don't see that one too often. It's actually very fun. The sequel, like it maybe like prequel to Tempo from the 32X. Uh, Bubble Bobble, Battle Toads, just some very cool titles or games that I just really love. The the ones that I like to showcase. Same with GBA down here. I'm a huge Kirby fan. You got to have Nightmare in Dreamland. Uh, Metroid Fusion. A lot of people overlook that game. I don't know why that game's still like a $15, $20 game. And I, man, I, it's probably down in there, but I do have the, one of the Fire Emblems, I believe. Castlevania Circle of the Moon back there. I have yet to play that one, and I'm, I'm trying to play all the Castlevania games. Uh, for Game Boy Color, my most obscure one that I have in high end would probably be Resident Evil Gaiden. This game is, a lot of people hated it, but you know, I tell you what, for the Game Boy, it was kind of ahead of its time, and it was just very, it was Resident Evil themed. I enjoyed it. it it's i don't know it's weird but that game's stupidly expensive it should, <laughs> for what it is it, it's just it's it's more than what you would think it'd be uh kirby tilt and tumble that one you don't see too often uh for original game boy hmm i don't know what my most high-end title would be like i said i don't have these crazy you know titles i did get rid of uh wayne's world for the uh, game boy i played it i did not want that in my collection <laughs> Uh, let's see, probably Sword of Hope 2, which I do have. This, Yeah, here it is, Sword of Hope 2. Probably my most expensive original Game Boy game, uh, maybe except for the ones that I have complete. I picked that one up at the uh, pawn shop for a few dollars. I think it was like two or three bucks. Uh, for Nintendo DS, much like my Wii, it's got a lot of crappy filler in there. But there are some really, really good ones in there, uh, like Custom Robo Arena, Resident Evil Deadly Sins, which I think, or Deadly Silence remake of the original resident evil and actually very fun to play on the game boy ds game boy ds listen to me you can tell i'm starting to ramble now uh probably my most uncommon one which is contact another atlas title right here uh very if you look at the back of this i love this look at this guy Psst, buy this game i need you <laughs> i love that man that's just cool and you know let's talk about all you know all it, it's it's a good throwback to old classic rpg games uh, for the 3DS, I have nothing that's just that screams uncommon there. That's another system. While being so new, it's better just to sell it and pick it up later when it's at a yard sale. My PSP collection, very basic. There's nothing in here that's probably just going to scream like, oh my god, that's an $80 game at all. Uh, but I do got some good $20, $30 games in there. For the NES right here, this is one that I didn't want to spend too much you know, time on there. Simply for the fact that... I have, I don't know, maybe four or five hundred games, maybe more than that for the NES. Uh, but I have gotten rid of a few big titles. I had Bomberman 2, I believe what it was for the NES. And I recently just got rid of Battletoads Double Dragons because I, I got it for the Super Nintendo. That would be the version that I'd prefer to play. Uh, but you, you will see some games in here that you probably just don't think of. Like um, Cliffhanger here, for example. 
I remember picking this game up for five dollars and looking it up and I was like, man, that's a fifteen dollar game. That's crazy. Look at look up that game now and you'll be like, oh damn, that's not a fifteen dollar game no more. Uh, we got Chubby Cherub. I for, oh god, I, I hate to say it, but I did forget that I had that one. Uh, that one's definitely up there. A lot of good solid titles, but you're not gonna see too much craziness. Elevator action, you don't see that one too often. Uh, let's see. I should have prepared for this, guys. One you need to be on the lookout for is not Spy Hunter, but Super Spy Hunter. Super Spy Hunter goes for quite a bit more, and I actually got it with the manual right here. And that one right there, I'm t I can't remember what it's going for, 30, 40 bucks. Wario's Woods, um, this came out for the Super Nintendo. I may actually get rid of this because I have this complete in box for the Super Nintendo. And I'm kind of getting into that mindset of, well, I, I don't need the variants of, of games, guys. I, it's, it's just kind of a weird feeling. Um, MC Kids, not too uncommon, just one you don't see too often. Like whenever you see an NES lot at a yard sale, you see your basic Tetris, Mario 1 and 2, you know, things like that. And, you know, you're, it's not like you're going to pull out Chubby Cherub, you know. Um, I got all the Mega Mans minus the fifth one. That's the one that's eluded me the longest. Um, I don't want to get too crazy into my unlicensed stuff here. Uh, a lot of this stuff won't be easy to pull out. I do had some. I did have some nice ones like Big Nose and whatnot. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go crazy pulling these out. There's nothing insane in there as far as like, oh my God, you got that. You know, there's no Action 52 in there. I'd love to have it, but I, I don't. Um, so there, there's some cool, some cool unlicensed stuff. Uh, but like, like I said, you know, a lot of people are expecting me to, you know, pull out like a. Oh, is that Toki the 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 first one with the. Oh, God, I'm I can't pull that out with the... Yeah, that's the original. Uh, I showed you earlier. We had Toki going ape spit, and there's Toki for the uh, NES right there. That's another obscure one. Um, let's see, I think that's about it for, for my NES collection. I don't have those, you know, I don't have little Samson or Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. And it may hurt you to hear this, but if I had it, I'd probably sell it and use that money to get some games more games that I, I would most likely get more enjoyment out of so moving on over here and we'll kind of wrap it up with the super nintendo stuff i did want to save it last because i had no expectation that my super nintendo set in my collection would become you know as greedy as it sounds like the, the most expensive thing that i have in the room as far as like a completeness goes but it just kind of grew that way uh, starting up here, we have a complete box Mario Paint, which is not common. You always find Mario Paint, and you sometimes find it with the mouse, and you rarely find it with the board. Well, that's got it all with the box, so that's pretty damn uncommon. This Earthbound is a reproduction, but the reproduction box is very nice quality, and I actually did complete it. I got the strategy guide in there. fits perfectly with the game. The game is crisp. Um, that is beautiful to me, and I have no problems with it being Reaper. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, moving down into the Super Nintendo games now obviously you can see a lot of the front center good titles here just you know heavy hitting titles but I do got a bunch you know just kind of shoved in the back that I haven't made room for Brawl Brother Brawl Brothers that's one that you don't see too often very very crazy beat them up but as far as heavy hitting obscure titles would go to this this row right here minus Super or sorry Yoshi's Island I put that dead center because that's my favorite Super Nintendo game. But starting over here, here is that Harvest Moon Chrono Trigger. Not the best of shape, but you know what? If it plays and works, I'm happy. Uh, Ogre Battle, another one that doesn't look great, but it plays and works. Mr. Nuts, that one's not that common right there. It's very gorgeous. The games, the, the graphics look amazing. Kirby's Dream Land 3, very, very good game right there. That game has shot up in price too, but that, that is one that I, I highly recommend. If you want a, a heavy hitter title, get that one. That one's got a lot of fun uh, fun factor with it. Um, interesting fact about Run Saber right here. As I was making room on my collection, I was running through the games and I was, I was like, Run Saber, why haven't I heard of that? And I pulled it out of my set because keep in mind, when you get games, you just sometimes you just put them on there and you just don't even think about it. I pulled it out and I saw it was an Atlas title. I was like, ah, I better look this one up real quick. And I'm glad I did because I didn't realize it. And then I actually played it. The game's phenomenal. Uh, let's see. Knights of the Round. Another uncommon game. Incantation right here. Very, uh, very obscure title. You never see that one. 
And of course, Mega Man X3, which some people remember from my yard sale flea marketing. Picked that up for, I think, uh, whatever I had in my wallet times, like 25 bucks or something. Uh, moving down again, like we got some crazy obscure things uh, or high end. This right here is awesome. I do recommend go to eBay or wherever it may be. You can get bootlegs. Get the Super Mario World. What is this? Return to Dinosaur Land. You will not regret it. If you ever want to play like a sequel to Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, it's the closest you're going to get. And it's actually very fun. I want to do a video on that. Uh, Lufia and the Fortress of Doom. I am missing Mega Man X2. That is one that I am looking for. But just some wild stuff down here. Uh, you'll see some games missing because I got them over there. Because like I said, I like to play these games. Uh, let's see. Bomberman. <laughs> I left that on there. I, I was like, you know what? Let's just leave it like that. I didn't even clean it up. Rock and Roll Racing. A game that a lot of people wouldn't think would be pricey. But it damn sure is. As far as complete and box Super Nintendo games, I don't know. I don't really have that. That probably the heaviest one would probably be like Star Fox or Street Fighter. I've gotten rid of things that I feel bad about back when I couldn't collect boxes because I didn't have room. Uh, and boxing, it, it makes no sense at all. Like I have Castlevania up here, the original Castlevania. I can't remember what that game goes for by itself now. Maybe somewhere between 10 and 20 bucks. Hell, I could be wrong. Complete in box, it's over $100. Or around that. And I got that complete. Same with, like, I had Rat Attack for the N64, but I had it complete in box. The game's only 20 30 bucks. I, hell, I ended up selling that box because I had no room for it. I sold that box for, like, $200 with the manual, guys. Sometimes, you know, the boxes can be more, more uncommon or you'll just never see that many of them out in the wild but guys that's it's really it that all i can think of you know we went i'm sure there's a lot of things i'm missing things that you're like man you didn't even mention that look at that thing but these are just some things that pop out to me um i didn't want to get too crazy editing i'm not showing gameplay footage or nothing like that but a lot of people have been asking you know what are some of the, the crazier titles in your collection and well guys you see it um there's some sealed playstation controllers very awesome and this is pretty uncommon although it's well it's uncommon but it's very easy to get that is uh, Mega Man for the Sega Genesis, except see that little sliver off the side of it. That is a bootleg. I think that cost me like three dollars free shipping, but it's the only way to play it. I don't have what what does it come out as like a PAL exclusive if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, guys, that's it. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Gave y'all something to watch. Maybe you learned a little something you didn't know about. If you've enjoyed, hit that thumbs up, guys. And as always, take care. Enjoy the rest of your day.